Now, there have been many people who have been quite important in Bill's life, and one of them is standing beside me here, Mr. David Gunning. Yeah, I'm just his warm-up man tonight, basically. <laughs> many of you know him. And so I'm now going to hand over to David Gunning, who's going to officially open the show. Thank well, you. Well, Bill, I'm afraid you'd more or less use the whole night. <laughs> well, I'd like to welcome you all to the launch of, of um, this wonderful book on Will Turner and his life, and to the pictures. I can scarcely believe that ten years ago I had never, ever met Will Turner and I had never, ever seen an original painting by him. It scarcely seems possible now. And um, what started it off was uh, Peter Davis's book, Northern Artists. And I remember looking through that and seeing pictures by Will Illustrated. And I assumed he passed away because <laughs> since Lowry and he were great friends, and Lowry had died in 1976, I could scarcely believe that Will was still kicking. <laughs> anyway, um, one of my customers, uh, Mr. Peter Sutheran, uh, who now runs a gallery from Sarby Bridge uh, called the Ryburn Gallery, and is a solicitor, um, he came to visit me on many occasions, bought many, many pictures. And he bought so many, and I used to say to him, are you hanging these pictures, Pete? Oh, yes, they're all hung. Well, I began to think he was telling me porkies, <laughs> because he bought so many large paintings, I couldn't believe anyone lived in a house of that size. Well, when he invited me in about October 2000 um, to dinner, I, I, I accepted because I wanted to see what his setup was. <laughs> well, when I went to the house, it was a very, very large house, and true to what he said, all the pictures were hanging on the walls. Well, we had an, a nice meal, and after the meal, his wife suggested to Peter he show me round the house. Well, we looked in several rooms, then we came to a room, and there were three pictures on the wall. Well, my hair stood on end. And I said, God, Peter, who are they by? Oh, he said, they're William Turner. I said, oh, I've always wondered what they look like. So there was a smaller one, a bigger one, and a very big one. So I had a good look at them, and I said, they're fantastic. And he said, well, you'll never get any, because he said, it's taken me six years to get these three, and they're like gold dust. He said, you just can't get hold of them. They never come into the galleries in Manchester, although I constantly ask. So um, I came home, and that was the end of that. Well, uh, 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 two or three weeks later, I went over to Geoffrey Key's house to get some work, and I mentioned to him how good his pictures had looked in this large house of Peter Sutheran, and um, that was it. But as I was leaving, luckily I remembered, I said, by the way, Jeff, I said, have you ever heard of an artist called William Turner? Oh, yes, he said, he's a good friend of mine. I said, is? He said, yes, he's still alive. Would you like to meet him? He's 80. And I said, I certainly would. So Jeff gave me his address, and then he said, I'll ring him tonight and um, arrange a meeting for you. So a few days later, Will phoned me up, and my late business partner, Brian Middleton, and I, we drove over to Congleton. Well... When he opened the door of his house, it was astonishing, because the house was absolutely stuffed with pictures, a few of which are here tonight, I might add. <laughs> and uh, the walls were covered, they were leaning against the walls, and later on I found they were upstairs in the bedrooms in great piles against the walls. It was just astonishing the number of paintings that there were in that house. Well, with Will's agreement, I call him Will because Anybody that knew him in the old days calls him Bill, because he used to sign Bill, but by the time I met him, he was signing Will Turner, so I always call him Will. And, um, no, where was I? The house was Oh, yes, and he agreed that we could take uh, 20 paintings away. Well, I came back to the gallery with 20 pictures, and I phoned Peter Sutheran up, and I said, you know that artist I saw at your house, William Turner? Oh, he said, you'll never find any. I told you, he said, it's taken me six years to get those. I said, well, I've got 20. <laughs> and he said, originals. I said, yes, oils. 
he said, I'll be over in half an hour. I'll, cl I'll close my office now. Well, he came over and he bought nine of them, two of which are here tonight. <laughs> and, um, and he bought nine. And then this brings me to a, an anecdote which Will told me, which it's nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but it's so amusing. Will told me once that he, he was painting at night and he, he hadn't quite finished this picture <coughs> so he thought tomorrow morning I'll get up early and I'll finish it off. Well he got up the next morning and was about to start painting when the doorbell went. He goes to the door and there's this chap says oh hello Will I haven't seen you in months. He said it was a, I think he said it was a managing director of a company who was collecting his work. Any chance of a brew? Well Will was furious because he wanted to paint. Anyway he invited the chap in well, the chap stayed about four hours. Well, sometime later, Will was telling Larry this story. And Larry said, well, I can beat that. He said, I was um, painting a picture late at night. He said, about minutes I went to bed, got up the next morning, put my smock on, and picked up my brushes, and the doorbell went. He said, I went to the door, and there was this chap. He said, Stephen, he said, my day is yours. I've arranged a day out for you. I've booked a meal. And Larry was thinking, oh, God, what a nuisance. And so he, he kept him at the door as long as he dared. And then he had a brainwave. He said, look, he said, I'm awfully sorry. He said, I've, I'm, you couldn't have picked a worse day. I'm going to London to see my agent. And um, so this chap said, so, but the bloke didn't go. So Larry said, oh God, is that the time? I'll, I'll miss my train. So the bloke said, well, don't worry, I'll give you a lift to the station. <laughs> and Larry thought, oh my God. So he put his overcoat and trilby on, picked up a little attache case, and gets into the car and goes down to the station. <coughs> well, when they got to the station, he got out of the car, he said, well, thank you very much, that's been a big help. No, I'll see you to the platform. <laughs> So he got out. Well, Larry was beginning to seriously panic now because we were walking towards the ticket collector at the platform and Larry didn't know what to do. So he, he, he thought, oh, I know. He said, listen, you wait here. I'll nip up to the kiosk and get a newspaper to read on the train because of course he didn't have a ticket. Well, he went up to the kiosk, looked back, and the guy was talking to the ticket collector. He climbed over the fence, caught a taxi home, and he said, I never saw that bloke from that day to this. <laughs> anyway, um, Will, William's picture sold steadily for two years, and I wrote a short resume because people kept asking me, who is this William Turner? They were buying his work, but everybody was wanting to know who he was. And so I wrote a short resume about Will and his, his life and his influences as far as I, I, would, I could see. And every person that bought a picture, I would give them a, a resume. Um, well, one day a chap came in, bought a picture, I gave him a resume, and off he went. Well, by sheer luck, this is where luck plays such a great part in the advancement of any painter. He happened to be the brother-in-law of Paul Barker, who wrote for The Telegraph. So he sent this resume down to Paul. Paul read it and read about this artist who'd been sort of sidelined at the age of, of 80 and had painted Larry from life, etc., etc. So he phoned me up and said, um, would, would, do you think Will would like me to write a piece on him in the Sunday Telegraph magazine? I said, well, I'm sure he would, without asking him. And anyway, he came up and interviewed me. Then he went and interviewed Will. And then this marvellous article, which came out on um, uh, uh, in August 2003, an article came out in the Sunday Telegraph. And to coincide with this, we put an exhibition on of 70 of Will's paintings. Well, I tell people it, it was opening at 10 on the Sunday morning. Well, by 8 o'clock, people were walking up and down outside. And... Uh, we opened at 10. Well, being British, the people, it, people piled in and everybody stood blankly looking at the pictures, nervous. Well, then eventually one man got hold of a picture and in 10 seconds the walls were empty. Everybody began to grab them then. And uh, it was, a, 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 I think I had a signed pair of Will's old slippers I could have sold them on that day. <laughs> and from the uh, article in the Telegraph, um, 
Oh, Peter Housen phoned me, Donald Hamilton Fraser, and both Royal Academicians phoned me, wanting to get hold of Will Turner's pictures. Um, and then there was an article in The Guardian on the 15th September, then the Manchester Evening News on the 16th September, followed by a TV appearance in Look North, and then a fully illustrated publication by Dr Paul Morgan called Compelling Vision appeared. In May 2005, Stephen Whittle mounted a major retrospective of Will's work at the gallery at Oldham, with about 80 oils and about 15 watercolour drawings, in including two superb sketches of Lowry, preparatory works for the Lowry portrait. Will, though well into his 80s, continued to produce work at an astonishing rate, and sales continued at an equally astonishing rate. Interest never flagged, in fact it continued to increase. Demand always exceeded supply. It was great to identify those pictures showing Will's love of the works of Lamming, Gruwalt, especially Suti. Um, but always in the spirit of influence, never imitation, which is always a sign of a great painter who shows influence of other artists but not imitating them. And I can always remember a, a chap coming in. He was a, about six foot six, extremely fat, with a beard, and he spoke with a, one of those accents that you see in black and white films of German professors. <laughs> and he, he looked around, and there was a small... We just had some new turns, there was a small one there, blocks of buildings, and it was very much in the manner of Soutine, whom Will loved as a, uh, one of his great loves as artist. Well, this guy picked the picture off the wall. He said, oh, my God, it's a Soutine. I said, no, it's by William Turner. No, no, he said, it's Soutine. I said, no, it's William Turner. He said, how much is it? I said, it's 265. He said, is that thousand? <laughs> I said, no, it's 265 pounds, and it's by William Turner. Oh, no, he said, it's, it's not, it's Soutine. He said, ever since I was a boy in Eastern Europe, I've loved Soutine's work. So he paid me, and he was leaving. The, he wouldn't let me put the, sh the pack the picture. He carried it to his bosom, left the shop, and I was shouting, "It's by William Turner!" Because <laughs> I thought he might come back and sue me in a few months' time. Um, though well into his late eighties, Will was still doing regular thirty-mile bike rides, as well as painting most days. When Will reached 89, his health began to fail and he stopped painting, so sadly I had no more turners to sell. However, fortunately for Will, Bill Clark had begun to sell and promote Will's work to a far wider audience than I could ever have done, Hang on, I'm not than I was able to do, and so Will's work gained the much-deserved recognition it warranted. This brings me to this wonderful celebration of Will Turner's lifetime via the book and the exhibition. Without more ado, I declare the exhibition open. It's a bit late in the day for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave, for that very entertaining <laughs> opening. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. We've sold a lot of pictures. We've had the biggest response ever to this show from all over the world. So please have a look round. There are still pictures for sale despite the fact we've got about 70 red dots. And the books are available and the prints are available. So enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.